Well, consciousness is a contentious issue in the world. People think it's just something derived from the brain. Other people put some mystical connotations to it. Uh, how do you view consciousness in terms of understanding reality? Is it something significant or trivial? I've always thought that consciousness is something significant, uh, in, indeed uh, very significant, in the evolution of the universe. And although we see uh, consciousness only in a, a very small subset of physical systems, and nevertheless it seems to me to play an absolutely fundamental role. Because at one level, all of science, our whole understanding of the universe, uh, comes to us through our own consciousness. It's our own observations of the world that we stitch together in this thing called science. So it's actually the starting point of all inquiry. Uh, but standing back, sort of taking a God's eye view, the question is, where does it fit in? If we look at the evolution of the universe, all the massive stars and uh, the galaxies, and then we've got life on the surface of, uh, of planet Earth, and then we've got uh, a, a small part of life as consciousness. Is it just a little embellishment on the great scheme of things, or does it play a fundamental role? Now, I think it plays a fundamental role for all sorts of reasons, uh, but one thing I suppose uh, I should say at the outset is that whether it's fundamental or not, we surely have to explain it. That is to say, uh, we can't just define consciousness away or shrug it aside as, uh, well, you know, it's just a funny little thing, let's not bother about it. It's got to fit into our scientific picture of the world. So I have no truck with people who say, well, it's a mystical thing that uh, we, we can't explain. I think we can explain consciousness, but I don't think we've got a clue as to how to go about it because none of the concepts that we get from fundamental physics you know, concepts like mass and momentum and electricity and so on seem relevant at all to what's going on in here. Now, obviously, there are brain states that we can come to understand, but the uh, subjective impression of the world, what uh, philosophers call uh, qualia or qualia, uh, is something which is not even couched in the language of physics. So we just don't know how to make that connection yet. But I look forward to the day when we can, when we can fully integrate a consciousness and give an explanation for it, uh, based on physics. And what I would like to say, given you know putting my physicist hat on, uh, is a very simple thing. Uh, on, on the one hand, uh, we think that consciousness has something to do with the swirling patterns of electricity in, the, in my brain. Uh, but most people would say that the swirling patterns of electricity in this building are not conscious. So as a physicist, I would like to know what particular swirling patterns have thoughts attached and what particular patterns don't. What is it? What does it take uh, for electrochemical activity to have associated consciousness? We don't have a clue what the answer to that is. So let's assume we'll figure that out or we know that. Uh, does the fact that that consciousness somehow have a, an effect at the quantum level, which is generally recognized, does that have meaning or just metaphor for the entirety of reality? Physicists are sharply split on whether consciousness really matters when it comes to quantum physics. Uh, and I've oscillated throughout my career. I used to think, well, it's just getting in the way of understanding. Uh, but because I'm convinced that consciousness is a fundamental part of the universe, uh, and I should say that my main reason is not physical, it's philosophical. It's because human beings are much more than observers. We also understand the universe uh, through science and mathematics. So it seems to be uh, much more than just observing the universe. So therefore, I think it's significant. Uh, but because I think it's significant, I'd like to find a place for it in physics. And the one place that it uh, has uh, sort of been on again, off again, is within the realm of quantum physics. And quantum physics is, uh, is physics that applies to the universe as a whole, but it's manifested conspicuously at the atomic and subatomic level. And because uh, at that level, uh, there is a sort of uh, fuzziness or indeterminism uh, to the behavior of, uh, of matter and forces, uh, what happens is that when we make an observation of, say, an atom or a molecule, uh, it seems to affect the way the atom or the molecule uh, behaves by um, resolving or projecting out from that uh, fuzzy indeterminism, a specific concrete result. So consciousness enters into quantum physics at the uh, point of observation, where the rules of the quantum game change as a result of that observation or measurement. Many physicists want to uh, get rid of that, and so they resort to uh, the so-called uh, multiverse explanation of uh, quantum physics. And this is uh, not the same as the cosmological multiverse. This is not the same as saying there are other universes way out there and way out there. This is saying that um, if, for example, you fire an electron at a target, 
and quantum mechanics says it's uncertain as to whether it goes to the left or goes to the right after hitting the target. Uh, in the quantum multiverse, there are two universes, uh, one with a left-moving electron, one with a right-moving electron. Uh, and uh, by implication, each would have their own observers, thinking they're unique. So uh, that's a way of trying to get rid of consciousness from playing a fundamental role in quantum physics. But I've always felt that this is a missed opportunity. If we're going to actually incorporate mm. consciousness into our description of physics, it seems to me it's at the quantum level we should attempt to do that. So this multiverse is just sort of getting rid of the problem. It's not explaining the problem. Can you then go from consciousness at the quantum level to consciousness at the universal level, going from just a metaphor for consciousness to a real meaning of consciousness in explaining reality? The difficulty a lot of people have with giving a cosmic significance to consciousness is that they say, well, there are only just a handful of conscious beings you know, on one planet, and what's that got to do with the universe? Uh, and so, uh, on the one hand, I think most scientists believe that ultimately quantum mechanics applies to the universe as a whole, but on the other hand, they think, well, if observers have got something to do with it, it's only going to affect some little corner mm. of the universe and not the entire thing. Well, of course, that's making an assumption about uh, the far future of the universe. It seems to me entirely possible uh, that human beings or alien beings or any sort of conscious beings are going to uh, spread out across the universe and... Although, at 13.7 billion years, it looks like the universe is old. In fact, it's exceedingly young. There's no reason why it can't go on for trillions and trillions of years in the future. There's absolutely plenty of time to be, for it to become full of mind, full of observers. And we can imagine a time in the far, far future when mind and the universe merge, in effect. They become one. Uh, and so the act of uh, observation which at the moment is limited to maybe a little corner of the universe, maybe others too, uh, could saturate the whole universe. The whole universe could become self-knowing. When you're saying that mind and universe merge, that, that sounds very mystical. That's well, it does sound mystical. Uh, but we can imagine it in a very practical way. We can imagine uh, that there are uh, conscious beings who will multiply and spread and uh, colonize the galaxy and other galaxies get colonized. Uh, but more than that, that they can eventually gain control over larger and larger regions of the universe. And, uh, uh, and these acts of observation that we're talking about could uh, begin to fill out the, the, the vast spaces so that in, at the end of the day, uh, everything gets observed. Uh, it, it, does look, uh, it does look very mystical because it looks like the end point of evolution is some sort of omniscient... Uh, uh, society, of society minds. of minds. It is society of minds because I'm not talking about a single individual uh, throbbing super brain. I'm <laughs> talking about yeah the, the general merging of things. But you know we are talking trillions and trillions and trillions of years in the future, and so I guess anything is possible. Hold on a second. Does that mean that when we have this society of minds, super intelligent beings filling the universe, observing all different parts of the universe, as opposed to just observing our little part of it? Does that mean that the universe itself changes? Part of this, uh, the weirdness of this quantum physics is that observations which are made uh, now can affect the nature of reality as it was in the past. And in the same way, observations made in the very far future, maybe a trillion years hence, can affect the nature of reality today and back in the Big Bang. So if you buy this whole quantum physics package and you have this uh, universe saturated by mind or saturated by observers, uh, then indeed the whole character of the universe, including the emergence of its laws and the nature of its states, uh, become uh, inextricably intertwined with its mentality, with its mindfulness.